Peace, 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 love, light of healing, peace, love, light of healing, peace to the gods, peace to the earth. Y'all climb on in, family. Climb on in the building. How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? Making sure we live, making sure everything up. Y'all see what we got on the board today? We're going to talk about the eternal slash internal organs, how vitally important they are, and we're going to talk about the reason behind organ harvesting. So y'all climb on in. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let me know once you're up in the building. Let me know if you can hear me well. Let me know if you can see me well. Let me know if I need to adjust anything that is actually uh, going on within my monitor or through this whole entire transmission. Make sure y'all like this. Make sure y'all share this and make sure you comment. Uh, y'all are going to really, really, really want to pull out y'all pans and pads today. I know I say that every transmission, but I really, really mean that right now. Y'all are going to want to really, really pull out y'all pans and pads because we finna go deep today. Shalom, shalom, lakha, mishpati, peace and blessings to my family. Hotep, hotep, my brothers and sisters to the conscious community. Assalamu alaikum to my Muslim brothers out there. Namasta to my spirituality brothers out there. You know, peace God to my five percenters. Y'all climb on in the building. Peace to the guys and earths. Uh, today is going to be a very, very uh, particularly important transmission for me because I deal with this a lot. You know, being in the health community, I deal with these things a lot where people are getting a organs harvest, you know, whether it be them going to the doctors or the allopathic community, getting things surgically removed or them going to get in certain type of surgery and coming back with other organs missing or, you know, on a wider scale. Uh, in the so-called black community, how we're just coming up missing by the hundreds of thousands and being found without none of our eternal organs. And the reason why I'm saying eternal is because we are an eternal people. We are a very special, unique people. Our gene expression is unique. Our genealogy down to our DEA, you know, deoxyetheric acid or what they call deoxyribose nucleic acid you know we are very very unique people we are the gods and goddesses of this here realm and we can prove this through biology so so make no mistakes about all these surgeries and all these different organs that that is missing and how they are taking out our organs and we just acting like it's not a phenomenon this is something that is very very unnatural and you should never, ever, ever get surgery unless you have to. But if you don't know your body, if you don't know health, if you don't understand and overstand the matrix and what's going on with health and how health is declining here in this Western hemisphere that we call the Americas, then, you know, when you go to the allopathic community and they tell you that, you know, surgery is best, you're going to automatically believe them because you have been programmed to buy into, you know, the flex of uh was Abraham Flexner report. And, you know, basically Abraham Flexner was hired by the John D Rockefeller foundation to push the curriculum of the medical education that is being pushed inside of America right now. And all this was geared towards you getting away from the actual home homopathic and naturopathic community, which is herbs and other different types of remedies to move more into buying medicines that was backed by petroleum oil and mixed with chemicals. So, you know, we are learning a curriculum and we are learning the education that basically program our minds to trust in the people that don't even know anything about about our biology or our molecular structure. So once you truly know, know thyself, once you truly figure out who you are, where you come from, what you are, why you are, when you are, how you are, once you know who you are and can't nobody tell you what or who you should be, then you, you're going to be like, man, hold on. I'm, you're going to think twice before you hear the word surgery. You're going to think twice before you let them pull a tooth out your mouth. You're going to think twice before you let them take your gallbladder because I'm stating that God did not make a mistake when he created you. God did not, you were perfectly and wonderfully and miraculously, amazingly created and made. God, the creator, did not make a mistake when he made you God and goddess. So if the creator did not make a mistake, then why are we saying he did or she did, whichever one you want to identify, whichever God concept you want to deal with, it don't matter to me, then why are you letting the people extract organs and extract vital organs and eternal organs and glands and gland cysts and all these different things from your body. So we have to get an understanding. We have to get an overstanding and an understanding how our bodies work and all the precious organs and glands and endocrine uh, systems 
in our body and we're going to do that today. So if you got your pen and your pad and if you ready to really, really remember something today, type in some nines. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to run through the whole list. We're going to pull out some cadavers and we finna go through it. So once I see y'all nines and let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me, if everything good, uh, let's not even hold no breath. Let's get straight into it. Let's get straight into it. Yes, your body is unique. Your body is perfect. It is. Now, you do have people born with certain genes that have malfunctions, but usually that's due to a lifestyle that, that your ancestors live. And unfortunately, we do have to pay for violating nature. But for the most part, we were created perfectly made. All right, let's do it. All right, for those that are new to my channel, my name is Yaka Raphael. Everybody call me Yaki Awaken. I am a master herbalist. I call myself a master healer. I am a biochemist. I am a botanist. I am a farmer. Anything dealing with nature, I am into. And uh, I really just starting to get into this forming thing. And, man, I love it. I was thanking the creator today when I was on my land. Like, man, I love growing my own food. There is no other feeling like freedom than planting your own organic seeds that's not been tampered with by the government, watching and doing all the things that require patience to love on them seeds and then watching it grow and spring forth and being able to harvest what you put in the ground. That is the most liberating, amazing feeling I have ever felt in my life. And I'm talking about more than meditation, more than body separation, that it gives me so much peace to know that I am in control of what me and my family eat. I am in control of what me and my family drink. I am in control of what me and my family watch. I am in control of what me and my family allow into our ciphers. I am in control of what me and my family wear. I am in control. There is no greater masculine feeling of, of liberation then growing your own, drinking your own water source, building your own home, owning your own property, truly landing. That's the true definition of landing. And man, it, it feels good. So let's get to it. Let's get to it, family. So uh, what I want to do is first I want to start off with the teeth because, you know, once we really start getting inside of this presentation I got, I want to start from the head down. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the teeth. We know that a lot of people get their teeth removed and you, you don't have to. You're not supposed to. And I want to show y'all how vitally dangerous it is. And if you really look this up, y'all can look this up yourselves and post the actual peer review science articles on what I'm going to say. You getting your root can you getting a root canal or you getting your teeth removed, you actually have heart attacks or cardiovascular problems later on down the line, and you suffer from heart attacks quicker than somebody eating all junk food throughout their life. Showing you that your teeth is vitally important and they're connected to nerves, and these nerves are actually connected to what you will call meridian pathways. Now we're gonna have some people on here thinking the word meridian pathways is spookism, it's connected to Indian chakras and all this other the crazy nonsense that y'all be thinking once I'd improve that the chakras is nothing but the endocrine system and that the endocrine system is the glandular highway of the body and these things exist and the meridian pathway exists also so I'm going to pull some articles just to show y'all that I'm not the only one talking about this there are other people talking about this too and these teeth inside of your cranium actually mean something y'all this means something and we are getting these things I mean, literally taken out of our mouths. How many people missing that side tooth? I know I am. I'm missing my side tooth on, on both sides. And then when we pull up the actual diagram and you see how we are missing our lateral sizers and a lot of us are missing our canines and you see what pathway or what organ is connected to, it makes sense on why they're pulling them from our mouths or they or they are uh, uh, extracting the roots from our teeth. And, and pulling all the poke from them and then placing toxic things inside of them for they can leach poisons into our brains. You see that? Instead of, a, instead of us teaching how to grow back enamel, which you can do, I did it my own self. How to grow a tooth back, you know, which babies do. Babies are born with literally two to three rows of teeth in their lifetime. You see what I'm saying? How to stimulate new gum growth, how to cleanse the gums, how to do everything to protect your mouth. 
They're not teaching us that. They are teaching abstractions. They're teaching root canals. They're teaching dental work, which falls into the John D. Rockefeller movement that I was just talking about with the uh, Abraham Flexner report, teaching new educations that's taking you away from natural remedies. Y'all have to look this stuff up. It will blow your mind. So what I want to do is, before I even pull up the tooth uh, diaphragm, what I want to do is I want to show you these articles. And these are just two of them. Now, if you look at the first one, and I'm going to blow it up for you. You ain't got to worry about it. All right, this talk about the evidence of the meridian pathways, all right? Now, y'all can read this article yourselves, and this is talking about uh, basically articles uh, basically showing evidence that the existence of the energy meridian truly exists. And this was actually done in 1950, y'all. And what they did was they they actually, uh, let me pull that up for y'all can look this up. Look this up, y'all. Look this up on your own time because we got a lot of ground to cover today. But that's one of them. But what they did was they actually entered, they entered, they injected something called uh, in technetium, in technetium into a meridian pathway. And it's basically these bioluminescent reactive type fluid. It's a luminescent. It actually illuminate under a specific type of UV ray light. And it's called technetium. They interject, they interjected or what you would call injected technetium in the meridian pathways and they waited 24 hours. And did you know that it actually outlined the meridian pathways in the body? People always said the meridian pathways was something spiritual. People always said that they didn't exist, that the yogis made it up, that the Egyptians or the Kemet made it up. But now, you know, if you really, really start doing your research, there's many different scientific articles proving these things through clinical trials, y'all, that the meridian pathways actually exist and the meridian pathways is actually connected to every nerve inside of your body. That's just one article. Here go another one right here. This is another one right here. Notice what that says. Experimental study on radioactive pathways of hypodermically injected technetium 99M. Look up these things. The meridian pathway truly exists. Chakras really do exist. We can call them different names, but they do exist. You can call them the NRF2 pathways if it makes you feel better. You can call it the, glutath the glutathione pathway if it makes you feel better. You can call it the glandular highway if it makes you feel better. You can call it the glands if you make it if it make you feel better. Hell, you can call it the seven churches if it make you feel better. Or you can call it the chakras. We're all talking about the same thing. We're just using a, a different concept and a different language to express what we're talking about. But we all still talking about the one. So I'm going to pull up this diaphragm or this, di uh, this diagram and show y'all literally that these teeth are connected to everything in your body. And when you look at, especially in the black community, the teeth that is missing on all of us, it will blow your mind on what it's connected to. And then you start Googling, you know, uh, the, 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 the causality of death. And it's all associated with these organs that we're getting that, that, that is going down or basically that is deteriorating. And then you wonder what's happening. Maybe it's the teeth that we're getting pulled. That's connected to these eternal organs. Check this out, family. So here go one of the teeth, right? When you look at this teeth, this teeth chart, you see that the two front teeth is connected to the stomach. All right. Now look at the two next teeth or what you would call the lateral sizers. Notice that the lateral sizers are connected to the heart. And we see a lot of people lateral sizers or, or the incisors are actually uh, 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 missing. Then you go to the next one. Notice what that's connected to the lungs. And this is what everybody's missing. Everybody is missing teeth three and teeth four, the lungs and the gallbladder. And a lot of people are missing the heart. Then you start going down and you get to them back molars. Notice the spleen. Then you get to the small intestines. You see that spleen and small intestines. And what's crazy is when we're going to start going through the organs that mostly get taken, it's everything that lines up with the teeth, family. Then you look at the bottom row. Guess what? The back molars, the actual kidneys, small intestines again. The liver, look at number five, the liver. See that? Circulatory sex, the bottom ones. Yes, your bottom side too. It's connected to your actual sexual organs. And then we just proved that the actual meridian pathways do exist. Now we see that these teeth come up missing. And when these teeth come up missing, they're connected to certain organs that are failing in our people or they're connected to certain organs that's most likely is going to get surgically removed out of your body before the age of 30. Y'all can't tell me that that's just a coincidence or y'all key is on some conspiracy types things. Yeah, I right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, you know, I want to show y'all which everyone, which 
with everyone I'm going to talk about, I'm going to tell y'all what to do. So to protect your teeth, first thing you're going to have to stop doing is eating polysaccharide sugar. You're going to have to get away from the polysaccharide sugar or what I'm going to call processed sugar or isolated high fructose corn syrup sugar or isolated sugar cane. Even if it says this is naturally organic sugar cane, it's still extracted sugar cane. It's a drug and they have to heat it up to preserve it. And these things actually rot away the teeth because it is very acidic forming. Acids is what rots away your teeth. What brings the bacteria to your teeth and your gums is the actual acids because the whole point, the whole purpose of, the whole important purpose of bacteria in your mouth is to chew away at the acids. The whole point and purpose of what you will call these enzymic secretions or what we're going to call alkaline secretions like amulose, amulase, and trypsin is to actually alkalize the mouth. So if you're constantly eating acidic forming foods and have acidic forming sugars or you chewing on things and you're not brushing these things off your teeth and notice back in the day they didn't brush their teeth and the reason why is because they didn't have processed food Food and they wasn't eating processed sugar, so they didn't need a toothbrush. You see that? But now since we are eating processed foods and we are eating processed high fructose corn syrup or all these manufacturing sugars, they are literally becoming acidic on our teeth and they're eating away at the enamel. And not only is they eating away at the enamel, but they're eating away at our gums. So the best way to protect your mouth is to brush your teeth, brush your tongue and brush your gums three times a day. Not only brush your teeth, brush your tongue and brush your gums three times a day, but stop eating the things that is deteriorating the teeth, the enamel of the teeth teeth and the gums anyway and that is all this processed food and most definitely the processed sugars once you start getting away from the acidic form and things that you put in in your mouth you're gonna notice that bacteria ain't gonna need to be in the mouth to affect anything because they ain't got nothing to eat the more and more you give something to the more and more you give bacteria something to eat, which is acids created by corrosion of left behind processed sugars, the more the culture, the more bacteria is going to overpopulate and culturalize in your mouth, causing all your mouth diseases, family. You see that? So let's go back to it. The bacteria is not the problem in your mouth. The acids is. See that? So we have to keep good mouth hygiene. And the best way to do that is by brushing your teeth three times a day. Make sure that you're gargling with tea tree, uh, with tea tree oil, oregano oil mixed in some water. You see that? Use toothpaste. What I use for my tooth and powder mix, I will give you the ingredients. I use uh, white oak bark. I use uh, myrrh gum powder, white oak bark, myrrh gum powder. I use neem powder. Neem powder is very, very good for the mouth. Neem powder is amazing. And activated charcoal and baking soda. Make sure you get the baking soda, what they call sodium bicarbonate without the aluminum in it. These five things, mix them into all equal parts. And you can actually use this as a paste or a powder. If you wet it, it will turn into a powder. Or you can leave it as a powder, stick your toothbrush in it, and brush the hell out of your teeth. Make sure that you, if you're not over the age, if you don't have diseased gums and you're not over the age of 45, use a extra hard bristle on your toothbrush. If you are over the age of 35 and if you do have deteriorating gums, just make sure that you get a, a, a soft, don't get extra soft bristles. Just get a soft bristle and brush your teeth three times a day. This will neutralize all the acids that's in the mouth and you will actually grow teeth enamel back. You see that? And once what's crazy is I was brushing my teeth so much when I was going through my healing detoxification and getting rid of the so-called diseases that I had, all of the different fillings I had and my crowns fell out. My body went through that detox, got rid of that extra stuff because and it, that shows you right then and there that your body don't need it. My crowns fell out. The aluminum that they put inside of my mouth fell out of, of my teeth. The fillings fell out. Show me that I ain't need it. Then look, not only that, two years later of constantly, consistently brushing three times a day and gargling and, and not eating these processed foods or this processed sugar, guess what? The enamel on my tooth actually grew back. It actually grew back, family. Showing you that you can regenerate your mouth. Now, me personally, I haven't had the tooth grow back. I'm working on it. But I sure saved my mouth, and I still got a lot of my teeth left, family. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is because this, 
the moment your teeth start to rot or start start to de decay or decompose, you start rotting away at the nerves. And once that nerve get exposed, the nerve is going to start hurting your head. It's going to start hurting your body. You feel it in your shirt because it is literally an attack on the nervous system and it is acid sitting on that nervous system, which is causing that systemic pain. What you're going to do is you're going to be in so much pain. Some people be ready to blow their brains out. I'm telling you. You're going to run to the dentist. The first thing the dentist is going to do before he talk about anything, he's going to talk about an abstraction or a root canal. The moment you get that and you pull that nerve, you just permanently damage. Let me say that again. You just permanently damage that part of the nervous system in that meridian pathway. And usually that meridian pathway is connected to something. So I'm going to put the, 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 uh, the graphics up here again. Notice the front two teeth is connected to the stomach. When you look, get to the incisors or the lateral sizers that's the heart when you get to uh stage three two three that's the lungs when you get to four that's the gallbladder five is the stomach again now we're getting into the upper arch and the molars six six is your actual spleen seven is your small intestines and eight is your spleen again and we're not just talking about organs that you can get taken out your body if the body was created for surgery which in string extreme cases i do believe in surgery if you get shot right now and instead of of dying of internal bleeding go get you some surgery done you see what i'm saying go go there and get you they are good when it comes to surgery but everything else, look, man, y'all need to learn a different way of healing. Y'all have to tap into the ancestors of old. You need to tap into nature. You need to tap into your DNA. You need to tap into your Akashic records and remember again. Because what they doing to us is flat out murder, y'all. So, so if they're taking your teeth, they might as well take your organ as well because their organ is going to decompromise and is going to be obstructed later on down the line. And that's why you see at the age of 30, so many black males and females are dying of cardiovascular system because the teeth that they're getting pulled is directly connected to the heart. If you think I'm lying, look it up. I got the article right here to prove it, but I want you to research yourself. I already showed two other articles. I actually have the article on here to prove what I just said, but I want, I want to encourage you to go look these things up for yourself and don't take your keyword for anything. All right, so now we're talking about the teeth. I'm finna pull out a cadaver, and once I pull out this cadaver, we finna go down the line because there's things that we're being that's being removed from our body, and all of them have a specific functionality in a specific purpose if you understand understand and overstand what i'm saying so far type in some nines and i just gave y'all the whole ingredients for the tooth and on how to restore your mouth brush your teeth three times a day brush your gums three times a day brush your tongue three times a day and after you brush make sure that you gargle and floss floss make sure you floss with it too all right per perfect perfect all right so let me get this and we finna start going through this stuff So y'all see, I got the cadaver. Can y'all see, if y'all can see the cadaver well, type in some nines. And we finna get to it. Let me get a pen if I can point these things out. So we already spoke about the teeth and how important the teeth is and basically how the teeth is actually connected to all of your eternal and internal vital organs. And what, what amazes me when you actually look at the word organ, it actually comes from the other things that you play in church, like the organ in church and the organ in church is all based off of frequency It's based off of sound. It's all based off the word of God or the word of the vibrational re resonance of the universe. So these organs, every organ in your body communicate with each other at a different frequency and they're vibrating to certain tunes and to certain light code frequencies that come from the sun. So when you start missing organs, you start messing up the orchestra. You start messing up that whole meridian, that whole meridian symphony that is going off inside the body. We need our organs family. We need to be learning how to heal our organs instead of taking our organs. When, when we think they're dying, we have to relearn health family. We, we truly do. So we already talked about the teeth. Now I want to get into something called the tonsils. The tonsils are an amazing part of your actual body. And the tonsils are a part of what you call the lymphatic system. I'm going to see if I can find a cadaver with some actual tonsils on it. Give me a minute. Here 
go one. I found one. So, let me show y'all this real quick. Uh, so, check this out, family. If you actually look back here, these are tonsils. Notice if you go through the mouth, y'all can see that? Okay. If you go through the mouth, you will see that it's tonsils at the back of the palate, right? Now, what's crazy is the tonsils in the back of your throat actually act as lymph nodes. And the whole entire point of a lymph node is to produce something called macrophages. And what these macrophages does is these macrophages actually get rid of unwanted acids and bacteria. So I'm going to show y'all a big old lymph node, and it's crazy what these lymph nodes do. The lymph nodes are a part of the lymphatic system, and the lymphatic system is the sewage system of the body. And what the sewage system of the body whole purpose is, is to remove all toxemia, to remove all debris, to remove environmental pollutants, to remove metals, to remove bacteria that's not wanted it in the body to remove broken down dead cells to remove all the things that is harming the cells of the body what happens is they flow through something called this interstitial fluid of the body and then they get collected by the actual lymph nodes the whole entire purpose of the lymph nodes is to cleanse that area so if you look every major organ in the body have a lymph node next to them so the mouth is important because all of your vital food and phytonutrients go through it so through the all these phytonutrients you have herbal Herbicides, insecticides, and pesticides sprayed on your food. You have natural critters that comes on your food. You have natural bacteria that come from your food because you're eating biological entities and organisms too. So these things come with their own septic tank. These things come with their own poop. These things come with their own feces. And this is the reason why you're supposed to be cleaning and prepping your food before you eat it. But the moment you put this food into your mouth and you start chewing these things, all the different and foreign, foreign invaders that came within that food end up in the mouth. So before they can have an attack, what happens is you have lymph nodes inside the mouth and these lymph nodes, are supposed, the tonsils, is supposed to secrete your macrophages alarm the actual lymphatic system the lymphatic system start helping you do these secretions of these alkaline enzymes these alkaline enzymes like emulase emulose and trypsin help break down your food even more and then the leftover microscopic organisms that can harm the body they go inside of the interstitial fluid of the body the interstitial fluid picks up these toxemias they go into this river of fluid and then the river of fluid take them to the actual lymph nodes once they get inside the lymph nodes the lymph nodes act like a septic tank inside the lymph noise is a bunch of bacteria and it's a bunch of macrophages and what these macrophages and bacteria does is break down and, and basically decompose the metabolic waste from you chewing your food since this is the first line of entry to your body or inside your body of course you're gonna have the first line of defense there which is your actual lymph noids so i'm gonna get you a lymph node and i'm gonna show you the actual composition of the lymph noids in the physiology of the lymph noids and notice what they're doing the first thing you get taken out in your body is your tonsils and you don't realize how important your tonsils is your tonsils is actually one of your first lines of defense family so this is a big old lymph node right now you see that blood goes into the lymph node lymphatic fluid goes into the lymph nodes you see all the bacteria and the macrophages around the lymph nodes, and you see the filtering mechanism inside the lymph nodes. You see the lymph nodes capillaries, or what they call capillaries, and you see how fluid comes in and goes out. Bacteria comes in and goes out. Acids comes in and go out more disintegrated waste. What happens is it flows into all of the rest of the lymph nodes through the body, and then it ends up at the kidneys. The kidneys is then cut on by the adrenal glands, and the kidneys release all the metabolic waste waste that you have from the environment from your food from everything else that you've been eating or that you actually been in a simulation with so the first thing they want to take is what your teeth not only do they want to take your teeth they want to take your lymph noise your lymph noise is a part of the lymphatic system so the the actual tonsils will be a lymphatic associated organ or gland Whatever you want to call it, it's associated with the lymphatic system. And I'm here to tell you, you can't heal no dis-ease or so-called dis-ease without the lymphatic system. All right. So we talked about the teeth. Now we talk about how important is the actual tonsils. And notice 
every major lymph node is around a big organ. The mouth is actually a big organ due to the tongue, due to, due to the teeth. So you have to have something to clean that area. And this is how amazing the creator is. The creator knew that we was going to be around environmental pollutants. The creator knew that eventually we was going to end up eating the wrong food. So what the creator did was created an actual trash can for each major station in our body. And as long as we keep that trash can clean and when it get full, we take that trash out. You won't go into a detoxification mechanism and you won't be tricked into believing that these detoxification symptoms is disease in the first place. If y'all understand that, type in some nines and we gonna go on to the next one and we finna go through the whole body male and female when we get done you gonna know how important your eternal and internal organs is if y'all got that so far type in some nines yes yeah, a lot of brothers and sisters walking around here without tonsils and what's crazy is the tonsils is what actually drains the brain so a lot of people that have pituitary cancer pituitary issues a lot of people that have melatonin issues a pineal issues a lot of people that have a bunch of headaches a bunch of biometric pressure built up with inside of their actual head they don't know that this is all cervical. These are cervical issues. And the reason why is because you can't drain. So people that is missing their tonsils, what we tell them is automatically make sure that you're eating a all alkaline diet. OK, if, if, if you don't have your tonsils, you shouldn't even be playing around. Make sure that the things you put in your mouth is alkaline. Also, you need to make sure that you're super chewing your food, chew your food all the way up, family. Don't just be chewing a couple of chews, then swallowing, because now the tonsils is not there to help secrete all these digestive enzymes to help you even break down the rest of your food. Your teeth is your first line of digestion. That's why they there. So chew, super chew your food. Actually use your teeth for what they was created for, to chew and break down food to a watery substance before you actually swallow it. See that? Now, if you're missing your tonsils, you only can depend on the maxillary cavities. You only can be, depend on the, syph, the syphnoid cavities. You only can depend on the cavities that's inside of your cranium. So now we have to figure out another way to actually drain these things. So now I got to make sure I give you cold and flu-like symptoms when I give you these herbs. I got to make sure that these detoxification symptoms are very strong. That way, since the lymph noise is not there to help me break down these different toxemias, I just got to drain them straight out of your nose. I got to drain them up out of your mouth. I got to drain them out of your ears. It's going to produce earwax. I got to drain these things out of your eyes. It's going to produce booger eyes, when, uh, boogers in your eyes when you wake up in the morning. Hopefully you start getting dandruff and it start coming out of your head. You see what I'm saying? We have to choose a different alternative route of elimination or what they call a fontanelle and open up a different pathway because you have let them take your vital organs or your vital lymphatic associated tissues that we actually call the tonsils. The tonsils are very, very important, family. And you can remove tonsil stones without removing the tonsils. That is the biggest hypocritical lie ever where people say your tonsils is full of stones. Let's remove the tonsils. How about, okay, we understand that it's calcification. They're called calcite stones. And the reason why the calcium is there is because the acids was there. When acids is there, it's going to trip the actual mucosa membrane. The lymphatic system is going to send mucus into place. Mucus is full of what you would call calcium. Mucus acid, especially uh, uric acid, mixed with calcium creates solidification. So, of course, I'm going to have calcite crystals or calcite stones in my body. My body is full of liquid crystals. Whenever it meets acids, it, it's crystal crystallizes itself you can dissolve these things if you stop eating acidic forming foods family all people got to do is when they start feeling that their tonsils is being swollen or they feeling that inflammation just stop eating go on an all fruit diet go on an all raw fruit juice diet it will be amazing i'm not even talking about herbs right now but if you want to if you want to pull them out quick use some poke root tea poke root tea make sure that it's not super strong but use some poke root Yes, yes, poke root, blood root. These things will actually pull the calcite crystals from the, or this, they either, it was going to either diminish them and bring them back down into a liquid crystal for they can leak out and you can spit these things out, which they taste horrible as hell because I tasted mine's, mine's was swole, but once I went on my 120-day juice fast, mine's came back to liquids and they were so full of acids that it tasted like death when I spitted it out my mouth. But guess what? I kept my tonsils, though. Everything in your body, the creator purposely made was supposed to be there. And if the if the body was truly, truly made for surgery, which I am saying in extreme cases, yes, of course. But if it was truly made for surgery, 
God would have created your body with a zipper. I don't see no zipper on your biological entity, family, showing you it's not made to be open and things is not made to be pulled out of it. You can heal yourself, family. You just have to change your perception. That's it. So I figured that I can help change the way you look at this. And I did this video four years ago. I'm just redoing it again because all of the new followers. But I've been talking about this. I've been talking about the vital eternal organs and how you're not supposed to get them removed. I've been talking about how they've been harvesting our lymphatic associated tissues and organs for years i've been talking about this about four to five years now but it's time to revamp it because y'all must have forgot your body is perfect family you have to choose a side your body is either at war with itself your body is either your enemy or your body is purposely wonderfully made and nothing is wrong with it and we have been tricked to believe in something is wrong with our bodies there is no gray area there is no fence straddling because when you straddle the fence you saying that god is a liar you, you saying that you are weak. You saying that your body is an enemy. You saying that God got it wrong. That's what I'm saying. So, so if you change your perception, we will live longer. And we can have life for the genealogies of generations that come behind us. Because this is about our future children. They are the true ancestors here. So we have to keep them living by living through them. And it's impossible to live through them if we can't pass them down vital information. Because we don't know none. Because we've been bamboozled and programmed by the oppressor. Just saying, family. So if you have your tonsils to keep your tonsils clean, it's the same thing that I was talking about with your actual teeth. Brush your teeth three times a day. Brush your tongue three times a day. Brush your gums three times a day. Gargle three times a day as well when you brush your teeth, your gums, and your tongue. Not only that, don't eat any acidic forming foods. Stay away from processed foods. Stay away from processed sugar. Family, I'm telling you, this will save your life. Your tonsils are a part of the lymph nodes. You have some small lymph nodes that I'm going to show you later on, and you have some big lymph nodes. Whenever you see the big lymph nodes, that means it's around a major organ. If y'all got that so far, type in some nines, and we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Yes, tongue scraping is amazing. Just do not scrape all of the yeast off your tongue when you first see it because that can be very, very dangerous. Uh, we do recommend you use a copper tongue scraper. Use a copper one for you can do some uh, for you can conduct some electricity and some negative ions while you actually uh, brushing your tongue or scraping your tongue. But uh, I recommend you brush your tongue instead of scraping it. And if you do scrape it, which it is good, just do not scrape every layer off because it can be dangerous. And that's that's from experience and dealing with so many clients because I used to promote tongue scraping a lot uh, until I start seeing how it can decline your health because you have to detox slow with stuff like that. You know, I believe in slow detox and detoxification not fast unless you're on your deathbed and you got aids and you're on your way out or they getting gave you three months to live and you you ain't got nothing to lose hell with it let's go hard let's go hard let's let's hit it with everything we got because they said you're gonna die anyway but if if it's nothing too serious always do it in layers you're gonna scrape and scrape but you're not gonna scrape everything off the first time you scrape you know by, by the time the third month is over you should be fully scraping your your, your, your tongue but everything happens you know it's the dance it's giving and taking nothing should go super hard unless you're on your deathbed all right all right so the next one so we talked about the teeth from the teeth we went to the actual uh tonsils we showed that the tonsils are part of the lymph node next what we have is the thyroid let me get a thyroid family where's the thyroid at? Uh -huh. here's my thyroid right here a lot of people get their thyroids removed. This is the thyroid, all right? The thyroid right here. See that? This is the ishma right here that keeps the thyroid connected. The thyroid is the gear shift of the actual body. The thyroid is what puts the body into drive. The thyroid is what puts the body into park. The thyroid is what puts the body into reverse. The thyroid is so important to the body. So the thyroid is what deals with aldine. And what aldine is turned into after it receives its negative charge is aldide. And what aldide does is not it buffers the cells. It protects the cells, the, uh, the membranes of the cells. Not only that, it produces T3 and T4 hormones. T3 and T4 hormones, it actually, uh, it actually brings up the, con uh, the conductivity of electricity. It controls your metabolism. Whether you, whether you eat a lot of food and your body breaks all the food down fast, that's the thyroid. Whether you eat a lot of food and it don't 
don't break it down at all. That's the thyroid. Most people that eat food and, and they gain weight, that's called hyperthyroid. I mean, hypothyroidism. Most people that eat anything and they remain skinny, that's called hyperthyroidism. The thyroid actually controls the positioning of your eyes. That's why if you see some people with hypo or hyperthyroidism, their eyes can protrude from their head. That's all thyroid. The thyroid actually controls the actual hair strengthening of the follicles. That's why people that have thyroid issues get brittle hair, brittle, uh, brittle hair or brittle nails, the breaking of the nails, because the thyroid on the back of the thyroid, you have something called the parathyroid and the parathyroid deals with something called calcitonin and calcitonin is basically a signal that it hollers at the calcium magnesium bone matrix and it tells the actual bone to release calcium into the bloodstream. So the, and the thyroid is dealing with your actual vitamin D it's dealing with tyrosine. Tyrosine is what produces melanin. So, so if you have a messed up thyroid, it's messing with your melanin. If you have a messed up thyroid, it's messing with your awakening sleep pattern because the thyroid is in conjunction with the pituitary gland in the pineal gland in the adrenal axis. So the thyroid literally is dealing with every single organ in your body and it's damn near impossible to produce natural vitamin D3 without the thyroid. You have another one that's called tritryptophan. Uh, tritropophan. Tritropophan is another amino acid. These things mixed together is actually what creates your melatonin and substance. So the thyroid is super important. The thyroid is in control of your basal temperature as well. When you get a fever, that's the thyroid being alerted that there's a foreign invader in your body. So it will raise your basal temperature due to what you would call the, the follicular cells or the this 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 uh it's this H3O gel like substance called colloid. It will signal the cells of the body to raise its actual basal basement temperature of the basal sides of the cell. The body will then increase its temperature and literally try to burn out pathologies in the body. Any pathogens were there, it'll try to heat and increase the heat of the body to get them out. And it also thins the blood to increase circulation to a part of the body that has inflammation. So when you get rid of your thyroid, you are literally getting rid of all of that. It's actually kind of impossible to live without the thyroid. And that's the reason why when you get your thyroid taken away, they give you actually hormones that you have to take for the rest of your life. Because it's impossible to live without these hormones because these hormones it literally governs every single cell in the body. And if you look up vitamin D, that's what it does. There is no cell in the body that doesn't produce glutathione or doesn't need vitamin D. And all of these different things are tripped or signaled by, guess what, y'all? Aldide, or what you would call anionic negative aldide, the thyroid gland. So we need the thyroid. So if you get your thyroid removed... Right. If you get your thyroid removed or if you have thyroid problems, never get it removed. I would never suggest anybody get their thyroid removed. You can cleanse the thyroid. Now, look, I told y'all that every single major organ in the body has a actual gland next to it. Guess what lymph node is right by the thyroid? Can anybody guess? Anybody can guess what lymph node is by the thyroid? I'll find it for you. Because remember, for the mouth. We had the tonsils. What trash can do we have to actually clean the thyroid? Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you now. Here we go. Got it right here. Yes, family. It's the tonsils, which is in that last one I showed you, because the tonsils are right here. These are the tonsils right here. It's actually the tonsils, and it is the what, y'all? The thymus gland. And notice that the thymus gland actually sits on the heart, too, because that's another major organ that, the act that needs to be protected and need to be cleansed every second of the day. So when we start seeing vital, eternal organs, we're going to always see a lymphatic-associated organ right next to it because every cell of the body needs blood supply because the blood is what feeds the cells of the body phytonutrients, amino acids, phytochemicals, uh, minerals, or what we call electrons. Electrolytes, cations, anions, which is these positively charged minerals or these negatively charged minerals, hydrophilic material, oxygen, carbon uh, myoc monoxide, carbon dioxide. This is all fed 
to the cells by the bloodstream. The, the actual nervous system or what we call the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system is what communicates with the cells. It literally commands the cells and tell the cells how to react. They structure, they function. And then you have the great lymphatic system, which is so his sole purpose is to, well, I ain't going to say he is because it acts as a female entity because it's alkaline more or male males are more acidic in nature. Uh, women are more alkaline in nature. They're more magnetic. Men are more electrical. They're more, they want static. They all about static electricity you see that so when we speak about the bloodstream and when we speak about the lipids or what we call big mama or the lymphatic defense system we're talking about daughter cells we're talking about the feminine side of chemistry so the lymphatic system will be big mama but notice what she do she go around and pick up after her children she go around and she pick up trash after her seeds. Same thing that the lymphatic system does inside of the human body. It goes around and it picks up toxemia and it makes sure that it keeps the house in order because Pops, which is Pops is doing another thing. He trying to provide. Pops trying to provide for the crib. He out working. He out providing. So while he out providing, the children get left home with mama. Mama there protecting. Mama there bringing food and kicking food. That's the bloodstream. That's big mama too. She making sure food on the table. She making sure that the children are eating. But when the children eat, the children got to poop. So she got to change the diapers to them children little booties. So guess what? The lymphatic system going to come in and play a role. And it's going to change the diapers and throw it away in the trash. But then that trash got to go to the corner. And once that trash go to the corner, it got to get picked up by the trash can. The trash cans is the lymph noise, y'all. Imagine you just leaving your trash on the corner of your house and you let it back up and you don't pay that trash bill. Eventually, trash is going to back up in your yard and then that's going to be very, very unsanitary. And then you're going to start getting roaches. You're going to get all types of maggots, flies, all types of nets and everything invading your home. And that's how you create parasites inside the body because the body is full of trash. If you want to see maggots, if you want to see roaches, if you want to see all these other things that I'm talking about, have a dirty cell in your body and not clean. So when you look at the actual thyroid, we see what cleanses the thyroid. The tonsils cleanses the thyroid. That's why most people with a missing tonsil have thyroid issues, whether we're talking about Hashimoto's or whether we're talking about hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, or they are missing their thymus gland or their thymus gland is shrinking or their thymus gland is shrinking. So I'm going to show you how to actually keep your thyroid. If you got a thyroid issue, say it's hyperthyroidism, that means that you have too much stores of aldine built up inside the colloid, the colloid tissues of the follicular thyrocyte cells, and you need to get rid of them. That means you're not producing enough thyroglobulin, but you're producing way too much aldine. See that you can switch these things by eating things that have high thyroid globulin in them, like pumpkin seeds, very, very high in tyrosine. Very, very high in thyroglobulin because we understand that tyrosine creates thyroglobulin. You see what I'm saying? Another one, hemp seeds. Very high in tyrosine. Remember, the derivative of tyrosine, which also makes melanin, make thyroglobulin. Thyroglobulin is actually used to actually pass calcium and pass iodine into the system. So we need thyroglobulin for you can utilize your iodine. Iodine just staying around in the colloid of the thyroid ain't going to do nothing but bring you into hyperthyroidism. You see that? So there's certain foods and things that you can eat to get rid of that. The best way to get rid of hyper or hypo is go on an all fruit diet, family. If you in hyper stages, just don't eat aldine. It'll regulate itself. If you in hypo stages, you need to bring more aldine into the bloodstream. Hopefully that thyroid is not obstructed and you have nodules on there. If so, then we're going to have to cleanse them nodules out. Hopefully, hopefully you have your tonsils and you have your thymus gland. We can activate the lymphatic defense system and then start pulling all of the toxemias and all of the broken down environmental pollutants out of this thing and you don't have to get radioactive therapy for they can shrink the nodules and all these other basically experimental drugs that they're using on our people now if you already are missing a thyroid and if you are already on thyroxine and all these different other hormones for the rest of your life uh if it was me if it was jackie because i am not a doctor i'm a master healer i use herbs i don't want to be a doctor I'm not interested in being a doctor at all. Their curriculum is all effed up. But if it was me, I would just get my essential glandular kit once a month. 
All right, if you want to try it and do it yourself, go on the website, type in Yaki Awaken Essential Gland You a Kid and get the ingredients and do it yourself. It's not about the money to me. It's about the health and healing, family. But get the Essential Gland You a Kit. And what I would do is I would get that Essential Gland You a Kit. I would wean myself off the thyroxin and all these other things, and I would take that. And I'd rather use a natural, see that? A natural alternative hormone-making uh, 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 chemistry than be using synthetic chemistry that come from bovine cows and all types of other stuff that we putting in our bodies and we don't know what it's doing to our bodies. So if we got understanding, overstanding and understanding on the teeth, if we got understanding, overstanding and understanding on the tonsils, if we got overstanding, understanding and understanding of the actual thyroid type and some nines and we'll move on to the next gland. We'll move on to the next gland. And I'm going to do a whole entire uh, video on the thyroid. I promise y'all. I did one uh, last time and they took it down. But I was going crazy when it was when it came to talking about the allopathic community. I was mentioning the COV and all of that, too. So they really did snatch it down. So that was my fault, y'all. All right. So we talked about the teeth. We talked about the tonsils. We talked about the thyroid. Next, I want to talk about the breasts. We can't really get into the breast unless we talk about why people get their breasts removed. And that is breast cancer. So I'm going to get a breast. Let me put these things up and let's dive deep into the breast and notice Y'all, if we see that the actual thymus gland is over the heart, which is we, what we're going to hit after the breast, what actual lymph node, because this is a big thymus, this is a big lymph node called the thymus gland. If we see that the heart is right here and the breast is on each side, what's the trash can of the breast family? Give me the actual gland. Give me the actual uh, lymphatic associated organ. Give me the actual lymphatic associated organ family. Let's see if y'all been listening. Who got it first? I just told y'all the answers. Let's see. Who got it? What actual lymphatic associated organ is right next to the breast that cleans the breast from all this toxemia? Who got it? Detox first, CMOS later. That's right. Always do CMOS last. Uh, Mimi Lachey, that's show right. You've been listening, woman. Peace, goddess. Who got it? Yes, that's right, Tara Walker. Tara Walker said it first, the actual thymus gland. So we already got the answer to this. So let me get a breast. Good job, Tara Walker. I see you listening. Let me show y'all this breast. All right, so y'all, this is the breast. Now, when you look at the breast, notice what's wrong with this breast. We see tumors actually accumulating with inside of the breast, family. It's tumors actually accumulating, right? Now, we see all these lymph nodes, these green dots right here. Let me see if I can get a closer view. These green dots right here are actually called lymph nodes. Remember, I said that the body is full of these lymph nodes because the lymph nodes actually act as the sewage system of the body. Notice we have a tumor actually accumulating inside of the breast, though, and it's looked like it's going through a process called angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is basically when the tumor starts borrowing the blood supply and it starts growing bigger because now the tumor is getting phytonutrients because cancer loves glucose, cancer loves fructose, cancer loves galactose. It's essential for our cells to get sugar. So just because it's a cancerous cell, that don't mean that the damn thing ain't hungry. It's hungry. So it wants sugar to grow. So guess what it does? It hijacks and it creates its own new arteries and vessels, and, it's, and it goes through a process called angiogenesis, and that's what grows this tumor to be bigger and bigger. Now, when you look inside this breast, we see that the ductal tissues are starting to get swelling up too, right? So what they want to do is, they, if, say if they uh, say, you got tri triple negative invasive breast cancer. I think we should cut it off. We should remove it. First, let's do chemotherapy radiation treatment. And then we're going to remove the breast, even though we're still going to give you the treatment. What they want to do is hack the whole breast off. But you see, you have lymph nodes actually inside of this breast. Now, remember, I said that the blood feeds the cells of the body. I said that the actual nervous system communicates and commands the cells of the body. Then we start talking about the lymphatic system, which is lymph nodes. 
And I told y'all that the lymph noises created with macrophages and bacteria made the breakdown damage mutating cells. So the first thing they're going to do is say, let me biopsy the lymph noids for I can see if you have cancer. That's to me, my personal opinion with all of my 15 years of experience. That's the worst thing you can do is biopsy a cell. The cell is already malignant. There's something wrong with it. Whether it's benign or not, something is wrong with the cancer. You wouldn't be there. So I would not let them take my lymph noise because the lymph noise is the only way to drain and get rid of the toxemia and trash that so-called caused the cancer in the first place. And all cancer is is when the body lacks 66 percent of its oxygen and it go through a mutation phase. Now, it can get very, very deeper than that. But when you actually look at what cancer is, it's when the fourth and fifth electron respiratory chain doesn't work because oxygen is vital for those processes. And you can't really form ATP. So the body go through a fermentation fungus route and fungus is always deceit to the soul when it comes to cancer. And all cancer is the body naturally trying to detoxify itself. So it create a bag, a trash bag called a tumor. And guess what? If you pop that tumor, it's all types of toxemia, dead cells, mucus, and things that's not supposed to be in the body in the tumors. And notice what it does. It tries to get far away from the bloodstream as possible, but then it want to live because it's an entity within its own and it bars the bloodstream. So if you look at the actual true nature of cancer, this is my opinion, but they won't take down his damn life. This is my opinion. Cancer is the body naturally trying to heal itself by creating a trash bag called a tumor. And it sticks it outside the body. Sometimes the tissue is too strong because the thyroid is intact. So it builds inside the tissue. Just like a pimple. It's the body. It's the skin trying to defecate. For this defecation won't make it into the bloodstream. Pimples will come. You pop the pimple. You're going to see a little bit of blood. But you're going to see a lot of mucus, pus, and lymph. And if you check these mucus, pus, and lymphs under, under a Petri dish. And you get a thermal microscope. You're going to see all toxemias. And things that's not supposed to be in your body. Inside of the pimple. Same thing for the tumor. So your body is smart. Your body is trying to heal itself. We have been convinced and programmed that the body way of healing itself is the actual disease. And instead of you changing your perception, you will let them take your whole breast. When all we got to do is help and assist the body with getting these lymph noids and this lymphatic fluid and these lymphatic vessels moving. Getting all that toxemia out of the breast into the lymph noids. This is called the axillary lymphatic patch. When it goes to the neck, to the head, that's called the cervical lymphatic patch. When it gets down to the gut, that is called the gut, the goat, gut associate, gut associated lymphatic tissues. So we have to work, learn to work with our bodies and quit working against our bodies. Quit letting them take your breasts. So now I told y'all, whichever one we talk about, I got to give y'all the alternative and what to do, right? So if you had your breast removed, let's just talk about if you had your breast removed, that means they removed a bunch of lymph noids with it. You should be on a predominantly raw diet. You shouldn't be eating anything that's going to create too much of a sluggish byproduct because the sluggish, the sluggish byproduct will have to move through the lymphatic uh, tissues or what you would call the lymph noids to make it all the way to the kidneys to get processed out. And you're missing them because you had most of them cut out of your body. You see that? Not only that, most females that get their breasts removed, since the breast is actually related to prolactin, prolactin actually comes from the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is connected to the thyroid and the thymus gland. You deal with a lot of depression. So you need more sunlight. So if you had your breast removed, at least two hours of sunlight a day. Not only that, if you had your breast removed, you should only be on a raw diet. I will eat cooked food probably once a month, even if that. And this raw diet needs to consist of high fruits and vegetables organically grown without herbicides, pesticides, and insecticides sprayed on it. Another thing, you're going to need another stimulation because prolactin is not just there to create milk. Prolactin actually helps you create something called oxytocin. And this is your love binding chemistry hormone. So make sure you loving yourself. Make sure you speaking affirmations to yourself every morning. Make sure you journaling. You have to get rid of that energetic trauma. Getting your breast removed is very, very, very freaking traumatic. These things weigh down what they will call the immunological system or what I will call the lymphatic defense system. And you already missing lymph noise because they hacked the breast off. You see that?
Now, you have to be worried about your lungs because now you don't have lymph nodes there. That means your lungs are very exposed. And that's why most people that actually get uh, diagnosed with breast cancer, if they don't get it clean and detox the body in time, it metastasizes to the actual lungs. So most people with breast cancer end up with so-called lung cancer because the lungs are exposed now. You should be eat, drinking mullion teeth every day if you're missing your breasts. Mullion tea every day. You should be drinking coat's foot tea Every day if you're missing your breast. Uh, you need something called lung wart herb. And you need to grind it up, mix it with some fenogreek. And you need to put it in some 1,000 milligrams capsules. And you need to be taking three of those three times a day. These things will keep the lungs clean. These things will keep rest of the rest of the meridian pathway around the breast and the rest of the lymph nodes that's associated around the breast plate actually cleanse because you're missing your breast. And this go for the same thing if you got your breast and you're feeling lumps and if you're feeling discomfort, make sure that you're massaging it. It's good to massage the lymph nodes. That's why lymphatic massages is, is major in the community because we're trying to move lymph. Make sure that you're bouncing them up and down too. And I'm not being a pervert here, but get you a rebounder. Get you a rebounder. Take your bra off. Make sure ain't nobody down there for you won't look crazy. <laughs> or you see that? Or you around. Make sure you ain't around a pervert. And you need to jump on that rebounder or that trampoline for you can move those breasts up and down for you can actually break up uh, 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 basically uh, backed up lymph noise, stagnated lymph. Move the lymph. Hopefully you can start see your the nipple start to drip a black substance. The last lady we healed, we healed her of uh well her body healed itself. We just helped facilitate her healing in breast cancer. She no longer have breast cancer, and all she did was my three bitters and an off fruit diet. Just to let y'all know, we actually have that healing testimony on Rumble if you want to go see it. But all she did was the three bitters, and she did a, a all fruit diet and. Once her once that calcification and that solidification started breaking up, and they still tried to take her breast after she was healed. They let you know it's about the dollar dollar bills with them. But anyways, a thick black mucosa tar substance started leaking from her breast before she tested negative when she went back, showing you that it's nothing but toxemia. We just have to move the lymph nodes to get the lymph out, family. Your body is screaming for a detoxification. The body will create so many elimination pathways. The body will give you skin rash. The body will give you diarrhea to get rid of it. The body will give you a natural diuretic for you can pee everywhere to get rid of it. The body will give you skin rashes, psoriasis to get rid of these things. The body will give you eye boogers. The body will give you bronchitis. The body trying to do everything to get rid of this you just have been tricked that the symptomology of the detoxification mechanism is the actual sickness and disease and it's not and that is forcing you to get your eternal vital organs removed from your body when you never have to do that unless they get shot through with some holes or get stabbed up by a knife and you have to be extreme and you have to go get surgery other than that you are miraculously wonderfully uniquely created and made by God. You're a reflection of God. You're a reflection of nature. You're a reflection of the universe. You are the gods and goddesses. You are the chosen people of this realm. We need to start remembering that and acquire the knowledge and information to free and liberate our minds. Then we can start acting like it. And these are just the facts of the matter. All right. So we talked about the teeth. We talked about the tonsils. We talked about the thyroid. We just talked about the breasts. Now let's talk about what else is next. The heart. The heart is one of the most important organs on the actual body. I am here to tell you that the heart is not a pump. The heart is a valve. And it's amazing. I'm going to do a whole presentation proving this stuff. It's amazing when you truly change your perception and look at the body for what it really is. But you would never know what the body really really is unless you study the body and you go to your, your own experiences and clinical trials. And you will see that everything I say, even though it sounds like I'm going against the status quo, I'm not. I'm actually telling y'all the truth. But the world have been flipped upside down so much to the point that everything I say sound like a lie because they've been lying to you since you came out of your mother's womb. You've been listening to the lies since you've been in your mother's womb yes it's called the evolutionary biological history of a black child the black child start learning the moment of conception so you've been learning and programming these lies since you've been a embryo in your mother's womb that's why it's so hard to break through the matrix because this is systemically deep family this is some deep information i get it i get it family i truly truly get it so when you look at the heart the heart is a valve mechanism and the heart basically is in control of I'm going to keep it real. It's going to sound crazy. But when I and I want you all to look this up, it's going to sound crazy as hell. But I'm, I want you all to look this up and we're going to do a whole entire 
uh, presentation on it. The, the heart is in control of stopping the blood and reflowing the blood. The blood is not doing what they claim and it is doing inside of the heart. There's so many articles on this. When the blood get inside of the heart, it actually makes a, a, a vortex force and it pushes ions out and it creates a easy exclusion zones. And, and this literally charge up the blood or the life is in the blood. And then it actually be released. If you look at what you would call arteries, arteries is what brings the blood out of the heart through the rest of the actual body. And that's why arteries have muscles on them. And if you look at veins, veins have smooth muscles, but a little muscles at all. Veins is what deals with calcium. Calcium actually constricts. Uh, calcium actually constricts the blood. Right. Then if you look at magnesium, magnesium is where the arteries, magnesium and actually potassium or what they call K plus K plus cations. This actually releases the valve to release the blood. If you look at the actual heart, the heart is not a pump at all. It's actually a valve. And what it's doing is it's not repressurizing the blood, but it is spinning the blood to create an electrical charge of the blood or what they call the life in the blood before it gets distributed to the rest of the body. That's a whole nother topic. And I'll prove that probably a month from now. It's crazy how it Really work, so I know what I'm saying right now sound crazy as hell. All I'm asking y'all is to bear with me and look up what I'm saying to prove these things true. The heart is not a pump. If you think I'm lying, just start researching. The heart is not a pump. There's a bunch of scientists. There's a bunch of doctors that's now coming coming with this information that's been proven what I've been saying for the last seven years that the heart is in fact not a pump, but it's actually a spiritual valve. And when I'm saying spiritual, because something magnificent goes on inside of it. But nevertheless, if this thing stop opening and closing you would die. So this is one of the most amazing functioning pieces of meat in our body family. So you have to keep it clean. Now you have a bunch of blood being pushed into this heart every second of the day. That's why it's called beats per minute. So all this blood is being flowed into here. We have to make sure that the blood stay clean. Guess what's on top of the heart to make sure that the blood stay clean? The actual thymus gland. So anybody with heart issues, usually what's wrong with the heart is that the H3O2 or the H3O in your body is it, this, the consistency of this gel-like structure water is different. Or you have a backed up stagnated thymus gland and you need to clean out the thymus gland. Now, the thymus gland is very, very important. And this is the main thing that they move is the thymus gland. And the reason why they want to remove the thymus gland, because the thymus gland not only cleanses and protect one of the most important organs on your body, which is the heart but it cleanses and protect the mouth as well and it cleanses and protect all the rest of what you call the cervical and axillary lymph noise that's from the actual breastplate up to the top of your head so if you look at hiv for instance now me i don't think hiv is a natural phenomenon at all I think HIV is actually a biological weapon, but that's my that's my perception. That's how I look at it. I'm not claiming that to be true, family. Y'all see my fingers. I'm not claiming that to be true. But if it was true, why not attack the CD4 cells? Guess what the thymus gland is in control of? The thymus gland is in control of once your bone marrow produces new cells, blood cells, they have to go to school to be trained what to do. The thymus gland is the military school for the lymphatic defense system blood cells. The thymus gland cells are what you call T cells. The bone marrow cells are what you call B cells. Most of your macrophages, these things go to the thymus gland to actually get their position and role inside the military school. Then once they come from the thymus gland, they get a job on the front line to defend the body. So if I could actually take your thymus gland or if I can shrink your thymus gland through radioactivity or through uh, 5G network towers, because that's what all these EMF frequencies is doing, is penetrating the cells and speeding up the molecules of the cells and heating up the water constituents of the cells, bringing them to a boiling temperature because they're speeding up so much that they dehydrate themselves and disintegrate themselves. That's why we have to get away from Wi-Fi. That's why we have to get away from cell phones and most of you women putting cell phones in your bras. Keep these things away from your breast and away from your heart because it's deteriorating not only those that I just mentioned but it's deteriorating and it's shrinking the thymus gland as well and the thymus gland is one of the major defense mechanism tissues in the body because it's not the birth of the actual military of the body but it is the training school to the military of the body and that's where the t-cells actually get they functioning from that's where the b-cells get they functioning from that's where the phagocytes get they functioning from that's where the lymphocytes get they functioning from. That's from the thymus gland. 
The thymus gland produces and makes all of the molecules that actually protects your body from foreign invaders. So we see people getting their teeth removed. We get see people getting their tonsils removed. We see people getting their thyroids removed. We see people getting their breast cut off. And now we see people getting their thymus gland removed. But all of these things have a specific function and structure to the human body. Y'all got that so far? Type in some nines. And I'm going to tell you what to do to actually heal the thymus gland. And you can regrow the thymus gland, family. It actually grows back. I told y'all we grew back a thyroid, too. We actually grew back a thyroid. I am not BSing you. I'm not exaggerating. We grew a thyroid back, family. So these things are possible. All right? All right, so check this out. So if you want, if you want to actually cleanse the thyroid, I mean, not the thyroid, but the thymus gland, berries, 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 berries. And as far as the herb, plantain leaf. Plantain leaf is amazing for pulling and tugging. It's one of the most astringent herbs in North America. It's very, very astringent, and it will actually pull all the toxemia out of the thymus gland. And the best way to cleanse the thymus gland is by cleansing the heart. Bugleweed will cleanse the heart. Hearthorn berry will cleanse the heart. Hearthorn leaf will cleanse the heart. The Barber's family, what you would call burdock root, will cleanse the heart and cleanse the blood. Yellow dock root will cleanse the heart and cleanse the blood. Dandelion leaf and root will cleanse the heart, cleanse the blood, and cleanse the liver. These are the things you need to be taking, either if you do them in capsule form or as you take them as teas. But this will cleanse the actual thymus gland and cleanse the heart and cleanse the blood and multiple other organs. And the good thing about the Barb's family these herbs I just mentioned is they tone up the cells. They strengthen the integrity of the cells and they detoxify the cells simultaneously. Ooh, we, ooh, we, if y'all got what I'm saying so far, type in some nines. We're going to go on to the next one. We're going to go on to the next one. Uh, I'm going to do a small commercial real quick, family. Small commercial real fast. Uh, for those that don't know, For those that don't know, I will actually be in Philadelphia this weekend, which is actually the 30th of July. Uh, we're going to be at the Met Philly. Make sure that y'all go on Eventbrite and grab some tickets. Uh, all of the VIP tickets are sold out, but just go to Eventbrite, type in slash E slash Yaki dash Awaken Health Liberation Tour, and it will pop up. Yaki Awaken Health and Liberation Tour hosted by Nourish, uh, Sarah with Nourish. She owns Nourish Restaurant and my brother Harrison with HOH uh, Temple Healing. Uh, they brought me out. I appreciate the I appreciate her and I appreciate the brother for bringing me out. Uh, we finna turn up in that deal. Some information that you never heard before is going to go forth. So make sure that you come out to Philly, book your hotel room, jump on the plane. If you in New York, come out, holler at us. You in the DMV area, come out, holler at us. You in Philadelphia, most definitely come out, holler at us. You in New Jersey, come out, holler at us. Go on eventbrite.com, click and get your ticket now. We got some tickets left, y'all. We trying to fill that thing up. So come out, see me. Uh, there will be crystal healing there there will be uh sound bowl healing there there will be uh vegan food and plant-based food raw and cooked whatever you need and i'm bringing a ton of herbs and i'm bringing a lot of my seeds y'all y'all know that i have actually have a seed program i do have a seed program so uh i want to give away seeds i don't believe in selling seeds so i give them away as long as you Get the seeds and actually put them in the ground. And once you harvest them, you actually take pictures of it and post it and tag my name in it and you send me seeds back. I have no problem giving seeds uh, away, family. I love giving away seeds. So we do do seed banking. We do have an organic natural seed program where I have hundreds of thousands of seeds that haven't been touched by the government. So, hey, look, don't meet me there. Beat me there. Also, family, for those that are interested in any herbs or any healing, I want you all to go to www.yakiawaken.com www.yakiawaken.com uh you can get on there you can get any herbs that you need family we got three bitters we got teas we got capsules we got tinctures and i have what i call the geogenetic therapeutic packages the geogenetic therapeutic packages is really healing the world along with my three bitters now i'm not gonna lie to you when it comes to them herbs Hey, man, I'm top dog. I'm very, very confident in that because that's literally what i do i've been doing this for a long time and uh it works so yeah Book your tickets, see me in Philly, www.yakiawaken.com if you need any healing herbs or if you need to read any charts or learn any type of healing modality whatsoever. All right, back to it. 
So we talked about teeth. We talked about tonsils. We talked about the thyroid. We talked about the breast. Uh, we talked about the lymph nodes all together. And then we just went over the thymus gland and I gave you the herbs for all of those. Next thing I want to talk about that people get removed that is very, very important is our stomach. Let me get a model. Let me get a model, fam. reason why I'm doing both of these because as soon as we talk about the stomach, we're going to have to talk about the large intestines and the colon. So if you look at this, this is a stomach. All right. This is the fungus of the stomach right here to my right or to my left to y'all right. This is the actual body of the stomach and it's the atrium of the stomach. Right now, the purpose of the stomach is actually to produce what you would call hydrochloric acid by way of mucosa goblet cells. Mucosa goblet cells mixed with pepsin actually creates hydrochloric acid. And the whole entire purpose of hydrochloric acids is to actually break down your food. The stomach is a time capsule. And basically, it is time with a biological clock with inside of the genome of the stomach, and it releases acids to break down the food a certain period, a certain period, or a certain time after you digested your food to help you break down and, and yield the phytonutrients from the food. A lot of people are getting uh, gastric bypass surgery. A lot of people are getting their stomachs removed and getting a actual esophagus connected straight to the duodenum, and this is actually messing up the actual stomach issue. You can heal the stomach. Whether we're talking about H. pylori, helicobacter, causing you to have ulcers, you can heal your ulcers. You can heal your ulcers. Look, just a teaspoon and a warm, a teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate or what you would call baking soda and some warm water will help you heal your actual ulcers of your stomach. There should be no reason that we're getting our stomach taken out unless we got shot with a chopper and it split our stomach in half and we got to get it removed or a traumatic experience or event happened where we can't keep it in. Other than that, we can naturally heal these things. You can bring back up the hydrochloric acid inside your stomach. All you have to do is get certain types of bacteria like biobifidum bacteria. You can bring down the hydrochloric acid in your stomach by certain things that you eat. So if you are missing a stomach, which a lot of black people, so-called black people, melanated beans, or missing a stomach, you have to make sure that you are super chewing your food because you don't have any hydrochloric acid actually breaking down your food. So before you swallow your food, your food should literally be watery before you swallow it down. And do not inge uh, do not swallow big gulps of food at a time. Chew small and chew a lot. Chew small and chew a lot. All right. Not only that, if you are missing a stomach, again, you're missing a hydrochloric acid, but you are missing pepsinogen, uh, pepsinogen as well, which is this alkaline enzyme that becomes alkaline after it goes through its hard acidic process. So we're going to have to count on the actual pancreas and the gallbladder to help you out. So if you're missing a stomach, make sure that you're not eating lipid foods. These are foods that's high in fat content. So if you're missing a stomach, stay away from meat. Stay away from meat, period. You shouldn't be eating that anyway. If you're missing a stomach, stay away from dairy products. Stay away from dairy products. You shouldn't be eating that anyway. If you're missing stomach, stay away from nuts. Because it takes too much stomach acid to break it down, and you don't have the acids to break it down. And you can't super chew polypeptide chains like that. So you're going to stay away from nuts, and you're going to stay away from beans and stuff like that. Only bean that I truly recommend, though, is what you would call a garbanzo bean, which is not a bean at all. It's actually a caryopsis a seed or what you would call a fruit. You know, so and, and um, what you, yeah, garbanzo beans. Garbanzo beans and lentil beans. And lentil beans is not a bean either. So we have to get our vocabulary right when it comes to our fruits and vegetables, too. That's all jacked up as well. And that's why I keep talking about education. Our education system is so messed up, y'all. I mean, it's crazy. We literally have to rebirth a new nation of new thinkers, a new critical thinkers. And we literally have to rewrite the, cur the curriculum. And that's the reason why I'm coming out with one of the best books that will ever hit this earth, ever. This book so dope is going to be hieroglyphs made after this book that I'm creating. And the book is called Healing the Illusions We Call Disease. All right, so if you're missing your stomach, super chew your food. If you're missing your stomach, strengthen up your pancreas and strengthen up your actual liver and strengthen up your gallbladder. If you're missing your pancreas, do not eat any lipid foods, family. 
All right. And, and I think you would do good. Now, it's unfortunate that you is missing your stomach, but you can survive without your stomach. But remember, everything in your body was purposely created to be there for a reason. So the whole entire purpose of the stomach is to chew up the food for you can extract all of the micronutrients to go into the small duodenum intestines. Since you don't have the hydrochloric acid to break that up, you're going to have to do that part with your mouth. Super, super, super chew your food. That's all I would say with that. You really don't need to do nothing else. So if you got that, if you understand that, type in some nines and we'll move on. Because a lot of things they do is they start removing intestines as well. All right? They start removing intestines as well. All right? So, so far we went over teeth. We went from teeth to tonsils. We went from tonsils to thyroid. We went from the thyroid to the breast. We went from the breast to the thymus gland. We went from the thymus gland to the stomach. Now I need to talk about the duodenum before we get to the colon. I keep getting up too. Where's the duodenum? I need a duodenum. Hold on, fam. Uh, duodenum. And what they call the duodenum. I don't know about y'all, but I'm having fun pulling out all my toys now. Okay, since I ain't got a duodenum and a small, I'm going to have to pull up the big cadaver. So let me just lift this up to show y'all the duodenum. All right, family, I'm going to show y'all the duodenum. Let's take off the lungs. And people be getting their lungs removed, too, but that's, you know, you already know what's going on with that. You know, you can't live without your liver, so don't, we don't need to talk about the liver. So I'm taking off the stomach. All right, I'm taking off the transverse colon. All right, so I'm going to take off the intestines, the jejuleum. Now, when I take off this, this is the mesenteric muscle that actually keep it connected to the diaphragmatic muscle. So when I take that off, I want y'all to look at this. So this is the actual duodenum. And what the duodenum is, it's a nine-inch intestinal tract. And it's connected to the actual stomach. So the back part of the stomach is connected, or the bottom, the atrium of the stomach is connected right here. This is how it looks. So the food goes inside of the stomach hydrochloric acid breaks down the food. Once the food is broken down and all of the actual micro and macro minerals are extracted from it, it then goes into what you would call the duodenum. The duodenum is a nine inch intestinal tract. And this is the duodenum right here. That's the duodenum. Now inside the duodenum, you have trillions and trillions and trillions of bacteria. Sometimes you have a lot of candida albicans other than candida, uh, candida albicans. You have lactose bacillus other than lactose bacillus. You have bibifidum bacteria. You have many different more. You have uh, uh, archaea inside of here. And the whole point is to break down and ferment your food. Because inside of the duodenum, you actually have a bunch of little hair-like structures called villi. And inside of the villi is where the bacteria lays at. And what they do is they ferment your food in it even more. And from this fermentation, they, cre they create something called methane. And this is where you get gas from. Because the faster they work, the more energy they use. And the more energy they use, they create a byproduct. And the byproduct of this energy is called methane. That's why you go funkerizing and Putin and forting on yourself and funking up the world. It's because all the bacteria are at, at, or at work there. Now, the beautiful thing about this is they break down your food into uh, basically micronutrients and deep within inside of the villi or these hair-like structures inside of the duodenum uh, is blood capillaries or capillaries. And they literally d deliver all of the phytonutrients to the blood capillaries. And what's crazy is they pass through lymph first and then the lymph, the lymph supposed to, if you don't have gut issues, the lymphatic fluid or the interstitial fluid will, will, will collect all of the things or byproducts that it doesn't need and then it goes into the blood capillaries and then the bloodstream act as a transportation system and it literally de de delivers all of the phytonutrients and all of the goodies the minerals and everything you need to 150 trillion cells in your body but what they have been doing is they will leave the stomach and they will take the duodenum and they will connect this back part of the piece of the stomach directly into the small intestines 
which is the craziest thing ever. So this is the jejulum, right? If you look at this, this is the small intestine, the jejulum, all right? They will actually connect the back of the stomach to the jejulum and have your stomach looking like this. Now, what are you missing here? You're missing the duodenum, where all of the absorption factor happens at. Well, luckily, your mouth is amazing. And remember, I was talking about your mouth and I was talking about super chewing your food. I didn't tell you about the absorption factor that happens under your tongue due to trypsin and due to amylase breaking down your food. That's the reason why people say put tinctures under the tongue because it goes directly into the bloodstream. So people that are actually missing their duodenum, you need to be juicing, juicing, juicing. And you need to be taking alcoholic tinctures because these alcoholic tinctures or what let me say alcoholic tinctures might trigger y'all let me say fermented tinctures fermented sugar tinctures which is producing the body produces alcohol naturally family that's what you go through a fermentation process for anyway that's what that's what the methane is created for anyway the cells take over two drops of alcohol every single day family so the body produces its own natural uh, own natural alcohol due to glucose and fructose and galactose fermentation and the reason why the body creates its own alcohol is to penetrate the cellular membrane to deliver the goodies to the actual cells so the cells can eat and get their vital nutrients. All right. I just wanted to put that out there. But anyways, the reason why juicing is so good for people that's actually missing the duodenum, because most of the absorption from the extracted juice goes straight through the mouth. And so this is what I recommend. If you're missing your duodenum, when you drink your juice before you swallow your juice and make sure that you swig it around in your mouth and let it sit in your mouth for a minute for you can get a lot of the absorption factor there. Now, you missing your duodenum. You should never be eating heavy. Of course, you shouldn't be eating meats. Of course, you shouldn't be eating dairy products, but you shouldn't be eating heavy grains or heavy vegetables either. Your whole diet should be seriously watery, watery vegetables like romaine, watery vegetables like buck choy, watery vegetables like uh, watercress. And you should be eating a lot of fruits. You shouldn't be eating no grains, no beans, none of that. You should literally be on an all raw watery vegetable diet. Now, Yes, this is for the rest of your life. And the reason why this is for the rest of your life is because you gave up the luxury of eating other foods because you let these people take your your, your duodenum. You can't violate nature and think that you, you can't pay for it. You have to pay for the violation of nature. And your body is a part of nature. So when you let them hack off pieces of your body, whether it's knownly or unknownly, that's a violation. You got to pay for it. You kill a man and you get caught, you go to jail for murder. Same thing with your organs. If you start going against nature, that's a violation you have to pay. You can't miss the blow the blowback. All right, so that's how you do that if you're dealing with that. Make sure that you're actually eating a food. Make sure that you're actually eating and swallowing your food and drinking your juices and let that absorption factor happen in your mouth. All right, let's clean this up a little bit because we got a lot of stuff on the desk here. How are y'all liking the presentation so far? If y'all liking it so far, type in some nines. Type in some nines. We're going to keep going. We got a few more to go through, and we're going to get up out of here, and I'm going to be live tomorrow talking about hypertension and high blood pressure. A lot of people have been asking about that. How are y'all liking the presentation so far? Type in some nines if you're liking it. Perfect, perfect. All right, y'all, next. Now, remember we was talking about the stomach, and we was talking about the duodenum. Now, I want to show y'all what actually cleanses out the stomach and cleanses out the duodenum, y'all. This is amazing. Remember, there's always a lymphatic-associated organ or a lymphatic-associated tissue there that helps clean it out. For instance, for the mouth, you have the tonsils. Uh, for the thyroid, you have the thymus, the thymus gland. For the breast, you have the thymus gland and the thyroid. For the heart, you have the thymus gland and the tonsils as well. So you always have all these different gut-associated lymphatic tissues around to be the trash can for each vital organ in the body because these vital organs work 24-7. They really don't have no sleep time unless you produce a melatonin. And at that time, they still working because they have to detoxify themselves. But guess what? When they detoxify themselves, it's the actual lymphatic associated lymph noise that I was been talking about here that they're removing from your body that actually keep these vital eternal organs. I know y'all like to say internal, but we are eternal people. These vital eternal organs cleanse. Now, when you actually get to the stomach or the whole entire gut area, you actually have another lymphatic associated organ there. And I'm going to pull it up for y'all. Check this out. 
Check this out, family. Watch this. I'm just going to pull up a picture real fast. All right, so when you actually get into here, hold on, let me pull up a picture. And I'm going to show y'all on the, on the cadaver too. But I want to show y'all what this thing look like because it is crazy, family. It is crazy. Well, give me a good picture. I want to get a good picture. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. All right, found it. So let me share my screen with you guys. Bing, bing. All right. All right, we're here. Let's do it. Let's do it. So when you actually get into what I'm talking about, we're talking about and understanding the lymphatic uh, anatomy and abnormalities and imaging of the body. I'm talking about this right here. It's in the middle of your gut. It's literally right behind your stomach and it's by your liver and it's right behind the actual pancreas, y'all. And it's called CC or cisternal Kali. And the cisternal Kali is actually one of the biggest lymph nodes that connects and cleanse your entire gut. This is the first thing that becomes obstructed inside of the body, y'all. Let me blow it up for y'all can see this thing. This is the first thing that becomes instructed inside the body. Notice that the cisternal Kali or the CC is connected to all the lymphocytes. It's connected to all the lymph vessels. It's connected to the liver. It's connected to the intestines. It's connected to the lumbar lymphatics. It's connected to everything that's in that center of your stomach. It also cleans the adrenal glands and the kidneys. So usually people with messed up adrenal glands and kidneys is they have a messed up cisternal Kali. And a lot of people get this cisternal Kali removed as well when they start removing things from the actual body. Now, remember, I was telling y'all about people going to get surgery and coming back with things missing. And that's what we've been realizing. People are going to get certain surgeries and they've been coming back with this cisternal Kali part missing to the body. The cisternal Kali is actually important because it cleanses the whole entire middle of your body. Anything that's associated with the gut, you have that big old lymph node right there. So if you can move that lymph node, you can heal the stomach. If you can move the lymph that's in that lymph node, you can actually heal the gut. You can heal the intestines. You don't have to truly, truly be worried about nothing. And the best way to heal that is on an all fruit diet, bringing hydration to the actual gut, breaking up solidification, breaking up calcification. You got to go on a solid food vacation, family. You do. Damn, that's crazy. All of them solidification, calcification, solid food vacation. It all rhyming, ain't it? That's crazy. Sound like I'm in this mug rapping. But you have to break up the calcification, family. So, and that's the amazing thing about an all fruit diet. See, so I'm not saying you have to be a fruitarian all your life. I love it, but you don't have to be. You know what I'm saying? 80% fruit every day, you're a fruitarian by default. But you don't got to eat fruit. But if you healing and you sick and you need to detox, that's all I'm going to really recommend is an all fruit diet because the fruit breeds on detoxification and you have to move that lymphatic system to heal the body. You got to, family. You got to. All right, now let's keep going because now we're talking about the actual colon, or what they call the large intestines. Now, a lot of people get their actual transverse colon removed. The transverse colon is a uptake utilization factor too. A lot of people have, uh, a pro, it's called a prolapsed colon where the valve get weakened because the, the mesentery muscle that keeps it connected to the diaphragmatic muscles get weak because the thyroid go down or because you have too many acids or you so used to being bloated and heavy and, 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 and big in weight that the muscle starts weakening out. So this things get very, very elastic and it starts to warp and it's called a prolapsed colon. And once it prolapses, it can pinch and you can't get no food through there so a lot of people get this removed too but they don't know that the transverse colon actually is an absorption factor and a secretion factor meaning there's enzymes that secretes from there to help you break down your food and there's an uptake absorption factor in the transverse colon too that brings things back into the bloodstream so we got to cleanse out our gut you have something called a mucus plaque that everybody if you've been eating this the sad diet or what they call the standard american diet you have this mucosa plaque you have to get rid of it i got rid of mine when i was on my 120 day uh, juice fast you have to get rid of yours and it's, it's it's all types of parasites and it's blocking you from absorbing so you have to cleanse the best way to cleanse is herbs and an all fruit diet you want to cleanse your gut real good get on my three bitters my three bitters are amazing for cleansing the gut then you go down the trans the transcending colon notice you see something right this is the ascending the ascending colon and this is actually what you would call the appendix all right now, the appendix is very, very important. 
because the appendix is where your formation of bacteria is actually created and made. Most people get their appendix taken out due to appendicitis. And the reason why you have appendicitis is because you have too much overpopulations of bacteria because your gut have too many acids in them. And remember, the more acids you accumulate in the body, the more bacteria you're going to accumulate. When bacteria get overpopulated, they call this a bacterial infection. So the bacteria, instead of eating the acids, they start eating the acids and eating the tissues away at the body deteriorating the tissues the bacteria was not the problem it was the acids in the first place so your appendix starts swelling and you go get the appendix removed so if you have your appendix removed or your appendix have burst and luckily you didn't die from it bursting because you would go septic because all of the different uh toxemias will go into the bloodstream and you would die of what you would call acidosis uh, hopefully that don't happen to you but if it didn't and you have your appendix removed you need to be on fermented foods and you need to be bringing some type of herbs that's going to help uptake and bring more uh, uh not only phytonutrients but more bacteria into the body so anybody that's missing appendix i say you need to do the three bitters once every two months if anybody is missing an appendix, I say that you need to really get into natural food fermentation for you can make sure that you're getting the good bacteria you need inside of your body. Because the appendix is actually created to help you mold and form bacteria for these bacteria can not only clean your gut, clean the acids out of your gut, but help you break down your food for you can have nutrients and mineral uptake. See that? So if you do not have your appendix because they took this vital organ out of your body, three bitters. Three, three bitters. Bitter one's got quassia chips in it. Bitter one and bitter three got a uh, 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 blessed thistle in it. Blessed thistle, quassia chips, and all these other minerals that's in my bitter one and bitter three actually helps you reformulize the bacteria that's inside of the gut. And fermented foods is always a good play to play when you need to rebuild gut microbiomes or what you would call the microbiota of the gut. Fermented foods. Because what actually causes the fermentation process is the natural occurrence of bacteria. All right, so... Now, we have been through the teeth. We talked about the tonsils. Uh, we talked about the breast. We talked about the thyroid. We talked about the stomach. We talked about the duodenum. Uh, we talked about the colon or what you'll call the transverse colon. Now we're getting into the cecum valve. The cecum is right here. The cecum valve and uh, the cecum creates something called chyme. So we're talking about the cecum valve and chyme is actually what turns your poop brownish, greenish, and it helps break down your poop and give it that solidification with fiber. That's what chyme is. And chyme is actually created in the cecum. But right below the cecum is the actual appendix with the tail, and the appendix is, is for creating bacteria. I told y'all create bacteria is created from within our own bodies, from within the, something called the pleomorphic granule of our cells. Most of the bacteria infections or most of the parasites you have do not come from the outside. They come from within your living biological material or what you would call tissues if y'all got that so far type in some nines if y'all got that so far type in some nines all right we talked about the colon we talked about that now it's time to get to the pancreas it's time to get to the pancreas let me start removing things the desk is getting full up here the desk is getting full let me get a pancreas y'all All right, so for those that don't know what the purpose of the pancreas, this is the pancreas right here. All right, this is the spleen. We have to talk about the spleen next. Notice that the the, the pancreas is actually in the actual the lateral size of the spleen. Now, around the pancreas, you have the nine-inch intestinal tract that I was talking about, which is the actual duodenum, which is right here. Which is the duodenum, which is right here. This is the duodenum, or what you call the duodium. Notice you have the pancreas. Inside the pancreas, you have something called the islands of Langerhans. Next to the pancreas, you have the vena cava, or the veins, and you have the arteries that supplying the blood to them. Notice right here, you have the gallbladder. We got to talk about the gallbladder. Notice the gallbladder is coming, the tail end of the gallbladder is coming from the pancreas in the liver. The liver is on top of this. It tucks, actually, if you actually look at it for what it really is, now, hold on, y'all. Let me change that because if you actually look at it for what it really is, the liver actually tucks itself over the gallbladder. So this will be the liver. The liver is on the right side, right? It's right up under the diaphragmatic muscle. This is act as my hand. My hand is the diaphragmatic muscle. The diaphragmatic muscle sits on top of the liver. Then the liver sits on top of the gallbladder. See that? 
And what happens is, but the gallbladder tail is connected from the pancreas because the pancreas feeds the gallbladder what you would call something called bowel or basal salt, bowel salts and basal salts. And the whole entire purpose of bowel salt and basal salt is to actually break down fats and lipids and fatty acids to bring these healing constituents to the brain because the brain loves fatty acids, right? Or cholesterol. The brain loves cholesterol. Without cholesterol, it's impossible for the va- the brain to fire off melanin neurotransmitters. All right, so if you take away the liver, notice if I turn this liver upside down, boom, guess what you see? You see the tail of the gallbladder. But the gallbladder is actually being fed by what? The pancreas. So the pancreas is actually in control of over 4,000 enzymic reactions to the body. You see that? In the pancreas is actually, somebody on there said anything to improve vision. Guess what actually controls your vision? The pancreas. To be honest with you, that's why most people that get diabetes have a pancreas problem because you have something called somatostatin, which is created by the delta cells that have a pituitary growth hormone that actually interchange with the octave nerves in the back of your eyes. Ooh-wee. See, the body is holistic, family. But... The pancreas deals with your sugar. So if you look at uh, the pancreas, you have something called the islands of Langerhans inside the pancreas. You have something called the alpha cells. The alpha cells is, uh, produces what you would call uh, glucagon, right? And glucagon is basically a hormone that raises the blood sugar. Then you have something called the beta cells that produces something uh, that produces another hormone called insulin. And insulin acts as a salt salvage, and it's, it's a key that unlocks the actual cellular membrane to bring insulin inside. For insulin can welcome glucose inside of the actual cells, so you can burn off this energy for ATP to make it short. Then you have something called the delta cells that produces somatostatin, and this actually is a mixture of both of them, and it te- teeter totters uh, glucagon and insulin, and it has a pituitary stimulating growth hormones that actually controls your growth and controls your bed wetting, your water retention, how you hold your pee, your seminal fluid, and last but not least, the octave nerves, which is at the back of your eyes to help you see. That's why most people that get diabetes go blind. Uh oh, see, we got to talk about this. So. A lot of people get their pancreas removed and they don't realize that the pancreas actually is in control of creating something called sodium bicarbonate, too. This is where you get baking soda from. Baking soda or what you would call sodium bicarbonate is a synthetic is a synthetic version of the natural version that our bodies produce. Everything that they create in this universe is created from substances that our body actually have or from the mechanisms that our body do. Just like the camera lens is created from our eyes. You see that the speakers are created from our ears. The boombox vocals are created from our our vocal cords. You see that the catalytic converter is created like our liver. The, the, The tailpipes of a car is created from our intestines. You see what I'm saying? When you really start getting into all the creation, it all mimics the human body because our bodies is the blueprint or the reflection of God itself. You see what I'm saying? So this is amazing. This is a very, very amazing. I truly, truly hope. Y'all understand, understand, and understand the knowledge that we are bringing forth in this day. This this knowledge, if applied right, can change the generations to come, y'all. This is very, very, very vital knowledge that I'm giving y'all right now. I just hope and pray, and it's free, so I hope and pray that y'all take this information, y'all don't take it for granted, and y'all apply this knowledge. All right, so the pancreas is for digesting and breaking down your food. So say if you have your stomach, say if you have your, uh, your duodenum, Say if you have your gallbladder, say if you have all of these things, right? We have to make sure that the pancreas is cleansed. Now, people do get their pancreas taken out. Uh, We had a lady that had pancreatic cancer. They took 98% of her pancreas, and they had to give her pancreas enzymes for the rest of her life. But we tried to grow the pancreas back. A a few cells grew back. We weren't able to grow it all the way back, but she's functioning properly because we did a lot of research, and we found some things that actually help her break down her food, which is what the pancreas is supposed to do anyway. Now, the first thing, if you are missing the pancreas, the pancreas actually helps create the islands of Langerhans, the islands of Langerhans creates B cells. These beta cells create insulin. Insulin is used for glucose. You need to go fruitarian automatically. Go fruitarian. Because when you eat fruits, fruit go a lipid route. They go a liver way. They go, they go to the liver. And then they infuse themselves into the cells, into the bloodstream. So you don't have to use glucose. If you eat glucose from your vegetables and from all these other things that we eat, eating, then you have to actually use insulin created by the islands of Langerhans, the beta cells, to use insulin to open up that door mechanism because insulin is used as a key to unlock the cellular membrane. You see what I'm saying? But you can bypass the pancreas if you eat all fruits or a high fructose diet. 
You see that? And that's natural fruits. And when I say fruits, I'm not just talking about raw fruits. Quinoa is a fruit, like I said yesterday. Peas or fruit, like I said yesterday. Legumes, these are fruits. Chickpeas, these are fruits. See that? Now, some fruits do have more glucose than fructose. But, you know, the fruits that have more fructose than glucose is what the fruits you need. And you can just do a simple Google to show you these things, family. So that's the first thing. You need to be, on, you need to be a fruitarian if you're missing your pancreas. Straight up. That way you don't need the pancreas. And not only that, this are, if you become a fruitarian, this are, as long as you eat organic food, this already get rid of the other things I was going to say. You need to be on an alkaline diet. Fruits are naturally alkaline for me. You see what I'm saying? And if you eating it organic without spray with herbicides, insecticides, and specs, uh, pesticides, which you're supposed to be growing your own food anyway, to be sure. But if you not, make sure you buy it with those organic labels, then you good. You truly good. That's what you need to do as far as that part when it comes to the insulin, eat more fructose. Now, as far as the sodium bicarbonate, it was made to alkaline your food in the first place. Just in case you eat something that is too acidic, that is alkaline forming in the long run. Guess what? If you just eat alkaline fruits, you ain't even got to worry about that problem in the first place. You don't need sodium bicarbonate, family. You see how perfect and how magnificent a fruitarian diet is when you really think about it? So that's what the pancreas does. The pancreas actually breaks down your food. Now, if you're missing the pancreas and you don't want to be on the pancreas synthetic enzymes that they're giving you, this is what I recommend, y'all. Let me pull this up and show y'all. It's amazing to the body, and it's called bromelian. And bromelian actually... So bromelian is a natural phenomenon because the thing about bromelian is your pancreas produces it naturally anyway, but they have found another natural occurrence in pineapple that produces the same thing. Bromelian is a group of enzymes found in the fruit and stem of a pineapple. For those that's on here, pineapple is uh, acidic. No, it's not. Pineapple is not acidic. Pineapple is acidic before it goes through its biological metabolitic process. Then once it goes through its biological metabolitic process in the Bible, I mean, in the body, it is alkaline forming. Same thing. A apple is acidic. A grape is at a 3.2 on the potential hydrogen scale. A orange is acidic. We ain't worried about the acidity when it's outside the body. We worried about is it alkaline forming or not. We worried about if it's mucusless forming or not. You see that? We worried about if it's formed to be alkaline, if it's formed to be mucusless. And all of your fruits that is organic or is actually mucusless and alkaline forming. Most of your fruits, 99% of your fruits, if you test them before you eat them, they're going to be acidic. You can't show me one fruit that's not acidic before it goes in the body. Somebody show me right now and I'll give them $500 to their cash app. Every fruit is actually acidic before you eat it. Then you eat it. It goes through its metabolic process. It goes into H3O and H3O2. Then it becomes alkaline forming through catalase, through trypsin, and through a bunch of other enzymic reactions. And then you yield the mucusless, uh, basically alkaline anionic properties from the alkaline forming food that was actually outside the body acidic in the first place. And that's the reason why we have help from the pancreas to help produce something called sodium bicarbonate to actually calm down that acidity from the stomach. You see what I'm saying? So we have to really relearn what we're talking about here. Now, check this out. Let's pull it back up. So it's called bromelian. Bromelian is a group of enzymes found in the fruit and stem of a pineapple plant. Pineapple is native to the Americas, but is now grown throughout the world in the tropical and subtropical regions. So People that is missing an actual pancreas, what I say is get that stem and, and, and actually get the actual stem and get the top part of the actual fruit and the fruit and put it all in a blender. Once you put it all in the blender, put it through a juicer and juice these things, and you will actually have the bromelian that you need to help you break down your food without your pancreas. And I'm talking about at least eight ounces of that a day. And we actually did clinical trials and tried that, and it worked. Uh, the email that that I know that the government hacked, had all the clinical papers that I had inside of there because I was tracking an email, email, but I can't get through that email any, anymore. Ain't that ironic? I can't reach that email no more. And this happened the same time that my tires got cut, I mean my uh, brake lines got cut, and that my YouTube channel went down. This was all in, in that year time frame. So I already know who hacked my email. I already know, but, you know, we, we ain't going to speak about that. Now, 
So we didn't talked about the teeth, we didn't talked about the tonsils, we didn't talked about the thyroid, we didn't talked about the breast, we didn't talked about the lymph nodes, we didn't talked about the thymus gland, we didn't talked about the stomach, we didn't talked about the duodenum, we didn't talked about the colon, we didn't talked about the pancreas. Now, guess what is made to cleanse the pancreas? What is it connected to? The spleen. How many people are getting their spleens removed? Ooh, we. Guess what the spleen is? The spleen is a lymphatic associated gland. And the per point and purpose of the spleen is to cleanse the blood. So the blood has to cleanse itself. So the blood cleanses itself through the kidneys and through the spleen. So if you get your spleen removed, you can't dump your blood into the lymphatic system. And these lymphatic lymph nodes will filter out the blood to make sure it's clean. So now you got to put all of that extra loads on the kidneys. So that's the point and purpose of the spleen. If you have a spleen issue, all you have to do is do burdock root, yellow dock root mixed with hydrangea and put some vast tech berries in there. Make a whole entire fruit drink out of that. Or you can do a thousand milligram capsules and you will take three thousand milligrams a day in the capsule form. Or you would drink two eight ounce glasses of tea and make sure you drink it in its cold state. And this will actually clean and flush the spleen out. You need your spleen because your spleen actually cleanses and filtrates your blood family through the lymphatic system. And that's the reason why this big lymph node is connected to the pancreas and connected to the liver and connected to the gallbladder and connected to the stomach. Y'all see that every major organ of the body have associated lymphatic organ or tissue connected to it. That's how important the lymphatic system is because the blood feeds the cells. The nervous system talks to the cells, but their lymphatic system cleanses and detoxify the cells. We talked about the appendix. Now let's talk about the gallbladder. The gallbladder is right here. Like I told you, the gallbladder is actually creates something called salts, bowel salts or basal salts. And these are to break down fatty acids. So if you're missing a gallbladder, just stay away from fatty acids. Stay away from avocados. Stay away from cover, uh, liver. Stay away from cod. Stay away from fish. Stay away from anything that have fatty acids in it. You shouldn't be eating any animal products anyway. But if you are, stay away from them because you don't have nothing to break them down. Go on fruits, go on vegetables, and make sure that you're not eating fatty lipid-based foods. And don't be eating things with a bunch of oil on them. And that's how you get rid of that issue and you won't, compl you won't compromise the rest of the digestive system because you don't have nothing to break down lipids. And lipids just means oil or fatty acid chains, family. See how simple this stuff is once you really know the body? Then we're talking about the kidneys and how people get the kidneys removed. We already know that kidneys deserve its own actual sitcom, family. But I'm going to give you all the main function of the kidneys. The kidneys is to filtrate every, every toxemia or cytotoxin in the body. That's what the kidneys are for. So if you get your kidneys removed or the kidneys are compromised and go down, it's impossible to cleanse the lymph nodes because all the lymph nodes connect to lymphatic vessels and the lymphatic vessels connect to the kidney. And you have a big kidney on your body called the third kidney or what we call the skin. And the skin actually acts as a large kidney organ too. And if the kidneys are down, the skin acts as a filtration system. So if you're missing a kidney or if you're on dialysis and the kidney's going down, you need to really be focusing on your skin. To bring the kidneys back up, I'm going to give you my favorite kidney herbs. That will be plantain leaf, always parsley leaf, always cleaver's leaf always violet leaf always and hydrangea root to break up any type of calcification or calcite that is building up on the kidneys all right other than that we have the reproductive organs and you already know the functionality of the reproductive organs so i don't feel that we really need to go deep inside of the reproductive organs if you understand and if you overstand and understand this whole type this whole presentation let me know so the whole point of Organ harvesting is to kill the lymphatic system. Notice every organ that I talked about that people get taken is actually associated with a lymphatic organ to cleanse it. And they're trying to take not only the eternal organ, but they want to take the lymph node that's responsible for cleansing that organ with it. We are at war, family. Our bodies is being harvested and they're trying to kill us. Depopulation control in the eugenic program is alive and is well and is real. And I just want you to open your third eye. I want you to open your mind and I want you to think outside the box. And I need you to shift and change the paradigm of your perception for you can see what's really the fuck going on. That's the only curse word I said this whole segment, man. I'm gonna give myself a round of applause for that.
So if you understood everything I said, type in some nines. All praises. I've been live for a long time. I was going to answer questions, but I will answer questions tomorrow after we do the blood, the hypertension blood, uh, blood presentation. Uh, with that being said, I hope y'all take this vital information. I just gave y'all research and look these things up yourselves. Uh, I hope and pray that y'all apply the information instead of just being walking encyclopedias. And I hope that you use this information. If it's not for you, use it for somebody else. If you truly love the information that I'm bringing, subscribe uh, to my YouTube. If you're on Facebook, make sure you click a follow. Follow me on Instagram. We are at uh, about 100, uh, 470,000 followers now. So look, follow me, follow me, follow me. Like the information, like this video, share this video and comment. That'll put it in the algorithm, al algorithm and that'll bring more people to this precious, vital information that I'm giving out for free. Uh, for those that want to know about, because I see a, pe a few people asking, those that want to know about the health and liberation seminar, which is on the 30th, which is going to be a Sunday. And Monday I'm having a pop-up clinic too. So if you want to if you want to spend some time with me, and if you want to get a live consultation and get an iridology reading on the spot, uh, make sure that y'all come out. So we're going to be at the Met Philly, the Met Philly, uh, Yaki Awaken Health Liberation Tour, hosted by Nourish and Hands-On Healing Temple. Uh, tickets are $144. All of the expensive tickets or all of the, what you would call basically the VIP tickets or sold out, but it's a big place. Y'all still going to see me. I'm going to try to hug and take pictures with everybody. Do not miss this information. This information you would never hear from nobody else. So I got this from my downloads and from my experience. Uh, just go on eventbrite.com and what you're going to type in is Yaki Awaken Health and Liberation Tour hosted by Nourish and HOH Temple. Get your tickets. Meet me in Philadelphia. We finna take over for a couple days. All right. For anybody that need herbs, like I said, www.yakiawaken.com. All right. I do not conduct business. Let me say this. I do not conduct business outside of my website. So if it's not www.yakiawaken.com, I don't care if they have a picture. I don't care if they call you. I don't care if they sound like me. It is not me. There's thousands of fake pages from Facebook, from, from Instagram, from TikTok that is using my content and getting y'all money and taking thousands of dollars from y'all. If it's not through www.yahkiawaken.com, it is not me. I will never ask you for money through PayPal, through Cash App, through WhatsApp. I don't even talk through all of those. I don't even respond to people's messages because there's thousands of them that come in a day. That is not me. If they asking you to do readings, and that's not me, family. I only conduct business through my website. So do not get ganked out here, family, okay? Uh, with that being said, I love y'all. Peace, love, light, and healing. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Hey, let me know where y'all from. Shouts out. Where y'all from, man? What city you from? Me? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Stay in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri as we speak. I'm a 314, baby. Shouts out to all my 314 citizens. Well, let me not say citizens. My my three one four sovereign beans. I saw so, okay. Shouts out to uh, uh, South Africa in the building. No more our melanated brothers and sisters indigenous to Africa. Shouts out to you. I right, Midwest in the building. You know that's where I'm from. Shouts out to Midwest. The book is gonna be out by the end of this year. Shine uh, Shine Juice. I said it was gonna be by the end of August, but I keep adding to it, y'all. So my book will be out by the end of this year. I promise. I promise you, family. And we're trying, to get, we're trying to get done with Food Forensic to be out by the end of this year, too. Netflix been on our ass about finishing that up, too. i just been so busy, man. I'm swamped up with healing. That's why I'm trying to create healers. There's so many sick people. Y'all taking up all my time. I can't do shit, though. Much love to you, family. Shalom, Lakai. I need to have a talk. I need to have a talk, Aki. I love you, too, brother. Houston, Texas in the building. We just opened up a clinic in Houston, Texas, y'all. Uh, we're going to be bringing it out too few. I, I was just in few. I've been back in St. Louis only two days. I was just in Houston. So we opened up a dope clinic in Houston, Texas. Uh, I'm going to drop that info, too, too. Uh, I, I did a whole live at the clinic, but uh, Instagram took it down. But what was crazy is it got saved to my archive. So I found it. I'm going to upload that video showing y'all that as well. Shouts out to Cali. Shouts out to Alabama. Shouts out to Chattanooga. Chattanooga is an Indian tribe. You know that, right? Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Chattanoogians. Look up, look up the Chattanoogas. Shouts out to Shot Town, Midwest. Shouts out to Milwaukee, Midwest. Shouts out to Washington, D.C. in the building. Philly in the building. Shouts out to Philly. Uh, make sure you get that ticket and I'll see you in Philly. 
Shouts out to UK, UK in the building. We're going to be doing a UK and London tour at the beginning of the year. We're taking this global, family. Well, let me not say global. We're taking this worldwide. Yes. Yes, we do ship to UK. Shouts out to Columbus, Ohio. We need to come out there, y'all. We all been killing each other up in Columbus, man. We need to come out there and speak with the gang leaders and the drug dealers. Stop that violence out there. I know I'm coming. I shouldn't be talking. I'm from one of the worst parts of the world, St. Louis, Missouri. But we trying out here. Shouts out to Michigan. Shouts out to North Carolina. Shouts out to the Miss to Mississippi. You need to look up the Mississippi, the Mississippian tribe of the Mississippi and Nile Valley River. Will blow your mind. Show you the original Egypt, and the original Mishraim of Kemet is actually in America. Look that up, boy. Look up Memphis, Tennessee, too. Memphis, the true Memphis. I'm like, once you start, boy, I'm telling you. I'm just saying. Shouts out to North Carolina. Shouts out to Australia. Australia in the building. We got South Africa in the building. Australia in the building. UK in the building. London in the building. We got a lot of people out of the States. Where my island boys at and my island girls? What's up with the islands? Ohio in the building. STL for show, for show. Man, shouts out to all of y'all. Shouts out to Detroit. We'll be in Detroit, I think, in September. Look, I love all of y'all. Uh, if I miss y'all, forgive me. I love y'all. Just take this information and please apply it. And do not take my word for anything. Diligently research, do comparative study, and check everything I said in any of my videos. I would never lie to y'all, and I'm telling y'all from experience, I don't regurgitate a damn thing. So what I tell you is to be true. All right, peace, love, light, and healing. Peace to the gods, peace to the earth, peace.